we're there to spend time with them and to cherish those memories, build memories, relive old memories. We're not there to beat ourselves up. We're not there to feel yeah. guilty. I think that's the key is we, we just want you guys to realize that it's okay to enjoy yourself on Thanksgiving. Like you're, you're not going to ruin all your progress. No need to be sitting at the table fearing eating anything and no feeling guilty. Like what does that do? That does nothing. Yeah. Move on. So the, those feelings of guilt then too, that come that stems from everything we've pretty much talked about, right? That goes, you get those feelings of guilt because you have those food rules, because you, right. you're practicing those restrictions, because you're saying good foods, bad foods. When you when you label food as bad and then you eat that, that food, you're a bad person and now you're guilty. So it's all about having that healthy relationship with food. It, it truly it, it is. Really I mean, it all starts it really up here. Is. Once you have that, it's it's truly life changing. Welcome to Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. Are you ready to cut the crap with your diet and exercise, get strong as fuck, and build a healthy relationship with food? Then you've come to the right place. Let's, Let's go. go. If you'd like to support us in the podcast, join our Patreon where you get exclusive content, which consists of monthly workouts you can do at home or at the gym, monthly challenges that are either strength, habit, or mindset based and access to over 100 plus low calorie, high protein, family friendly meals. These are all designed by a professional chef who is certified in nutrition. These recipes are already in my fitness pal for easy fucking tracking. New recipes are also added each week. We believe that fitness is for everyone. So this is our way of getting you started on your health and fitness journey at a price most everyone can afford. So what the fuck are you waiting for? We'll see you in the Patreon. What's up, you fucking nerdle Beth? Let's get into What's this. What's up, dirty bitches? All right, so we are going to do something new this week. We are revisiting an old episode. And the reason being, because this episode is very timely and it's still important. And what is mm-hmm. that that we're talking about, Beth? The holidays, you know? And what what happens with food and family and eating around the holidays, right? Everyone has a fucking Aunt Nancy at the table. We don't need her. You don't need negative Nancy's in our life this year. You don't need negative Nancy. So this episode, while it's a year old, we're going to replay it because first of all, we have new, bigger audience and new people listening. So we want to get this message out there Mm -hmm. so people can understand that, first of all, you're not fucking in this alone. Okay. Everybody deals with this bullshit. We're here to help you, equip you with the tools that you need to navigate the holidays, navigate all the food that's around during the holidays and navigate those friends and family members, which are oftentimes very fucking triggering for us. And then we start eating like an asshole because of that. Yeah, we're going to be talking about managing your emotions, um, setting boundaries with friends and family, and how you can still eat your favorite foods. And yes, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries are so important during this journey. So um, how we can eat our favorite foods, Thanksgiving stuffing, turkey, all that good shit, and still, you know, hit our health and fitness goals and be healthy. Exactly. This stuff doesn't change. These ideas don't change. These theories don't change. Okay, so that's why we're going to replay this episode. Everybody needs to hear it. We can always use the reminder. I know Beth and myself, we we need frequent reminders for some things like this as well. Yeah. So take a listen. Let us know what you think and uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Let's get into this. All right. All right, Beth. All right, Matt. What's happening? The topic for today is right. eating around the holidays and eating during the holidays. Not specifically Thanksgiving, but of course, Thanksgiving is included in that because we do have uh, friends overseas, of course. So, um, let's talk about eating around the holidays, how to manage eating around the holidays. Um, especially when it comes to what, like diet talk and, and setting boundaries and people talking about your fucking body. Like it's their, any of their business, you know, things like that. Right. Let's talk about it. Let's get into the details. Yeah. Let's get into, well, like the holidays are the holidays, right? Thanksgiving mm -hmm. is one day. Christmas is one day. New Year's is one day, but I think, people tend to take the Thanksgiving and go batshit until New Year's. Like right. almost like letting it be the excuse. Oh, I'm going to start. Whatever. I'll start New After- Year's. I'll be, yeah, that's not, mm-hmm. that's not good. Right. That's a recipe for disaster. No, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and because there's no best, there's no, even if you're not started yet, like you could start now and you could start right. doing amazing things, right? You could start getting stronger. You could start working on your mobility. You can start improving your health. Just because it's that time of year where there's candy around and chocolates and gravy and stuffing and cranberry Mm -hmm. sauce doesn't mean we can't still take care of ourselves in the meantime. Right? I think Um, it has to do with the all or nothing mentality. It does. It does. Which we are here to fucking throw that out the window. Like, yeah, that's what's holding a lot of people back, too, is the Mm -hmm. all or nothing mindset when it comes to health and fitness and nutrition 
but it's not it's not black and white there's grays there's reds there's purples there's right? everything so yeah. what the fuck what the fuck i think <laughs> One the one thing I always like that I'm telling people like right away, like we are not worried about weight loss on Thanksgiving. We are not right. worried about weight loss on Christmas. That that's the biggest thing. Like, what are the holidays for? Especially now in our current environment, right? Like a lot of people didn't even get to celebrate these holidays last year because of the pandemic. Yeah. So why are we gonna go and take something that we we missed out on last year with spending time with friends and family and put added stress onto it about worrying our, about our fucking calories. Right. So right. let's stop that right there. Yeah. I, like I said the other day in our TikTok live, I will personally buy a plane ticket, find out where you live and come kick you in the ass. If I find out you're counting calories on, on Thanksgiving, oh my God, you know, yeah. like, don't that, even that weigh is... yourself the next day. Like, I, like no, don't, don't weigh yourself. I told all my clients, I sent them an email. I'm like, listen, do not count calories on, on Thanksgiving and do not weigh yourself the next day. It's going to be up. It's going to be up. We can guarantee that. And why you is know, that? Salt, more food content, water, carbs, you know, you name it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I did not personally take that advice, but I know what I'm doing. Right? I do these things right. so I can relate these things to other people. So I was up seven pounds from Saturday to Sunday. You know, guess what? Today is Monday. I'm back down to where I was before. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that people should go weigh themselves. They shouldn't. But we know right. we're going to be holding on to water weight. We know we're going to be bloated. We know we're going to probably be having some poops going on, you know? Yeah. So like, let's... <laughs> and that that so could let's... be their one reason to be like, say, fuck it, right? Because they're like, oh, oh my yeah, God, that could scale, completely scale went up. I just, I just ruined everything yep. on Thanksgiving. So I'm just going to keep going. Bring the, yeah. bring the Christmas yeah. cookies. For sure. <laughs> And so you mentioned how, you know, Thanksgiving is one day, Christmas is one day, New Year's mm -hmm. is one day. But let's look at it this way. The way I, I was running some numbers before this podcast. Let's give those days five days. So let's give two days for Thanksgiving, two mm -hmm. days for Christmas, and one day for New Year's. When this podcast comes out, we're going to release this podcast on Wednesday. There will be 37 days left in the year. Okay. Yeah. Five days out of that 37, those 37 days, if you do what you're supposed to do, those other 32 days of those 37 days, that's 86% consistency, mm -hmm. which as we know, and as we talk about all the time, 80% consistency is what we should be striving for. Right, right. So, so you still have um, a little leeway in there. You do. You could, yeah, you absolutely have a little leeway. So you haven't ruined anything by right. um, enjoying yourself. Remember, yeah. we're here to have a healthy relationship with food and exercise. So let's talk about some things we're not going to do then in terms of exercise and things like that. So right. what are we going to do and what are we not going to do? So I'll, I'll, I'll start with what are we going to do? We will just get back to our normal routine, whatever that may look like for you. For me, my daily routine, my morning routine is... I wake up, I get some coffee, I go on my walk with my dog, and then I usually try to get a workout in or I'll do some work, things like that. So since it was Sunday, I wasn't working. So I woke up, I had some coffee, went on my walk, made a nice little breakfast, just like I normally would. I yeah. didn't cut out any foods. I didn't skip out on carbs or anything. I had a bagel uh, with two eggs. I had <laughs> a side of cottage cheese. I had some mushrooms and spinach. I had a nice nutritious breakfast full of protein, fiber, just like I normally would. So I got back on track, right? Yeah. So then what are some things that I didn't do? What are some things that we should not do then after a holiday or even after just going like off, off the deep end a little bit? Starve yourself the next day. Right. Right. And that you're not going to try to exercise or over exercise because you think that you need to, you know, burn off the meal or your day. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. First of all, you're, that's not possible. You're going to be bringing in thousands of calories of extra food on Thanksgiving. Right. It is literally impossible for you to burn that off via exercise. Exercise is a very shit way of, of burning calories. And we don't do, that's not why we exercise, right? Me, for instance. So I had deadlifts um, was my next workout in the routine. And I felt amazing for that. Like I didn't go into that workout like, oh my God, I got to work off all this food, you know, but right. I did have a lot more carbs. So I had a lot more energies, bigger energy storage reserves, right? Which definitely mm -hmm. benefited me in my workout. I was stronger. I had more energy. I had my muscles were fuller because there's a lot of more water retention. Use that to yeah. your advantage if you want. Yeah. But uh, also then like, what about leading up to, to Thanksgiving? What are some things that we should not be doing because people might be tempted to severely cut calories or right. skip meals or do extra cardio to earn those mm -hmm. calories. We're not going to do that, right? Yeah. Just like be like your, stick to your regularly scheduled program, you know? 
have your good habits lead up to that day and then you continue on with your good habits after that day. Because it's a lifestyle. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Yeah, that's, it's not... that's the thing. You're building a lifestyle that you can stick to. And it, it's not what we do from November to January. It's what we do from January to November that really makes the biggest difference. Exactly. It's all encompassing. That's that lifestyle change that we're after. Mm-hmm. Beautifully said. So then what some some other things that people struggle with on the, on the holidays are a lot of family interactions, right? So I think a lot of like um food pushers, uh there's yes. body shamers, food pushers, toxic, mm-hmm. you know, I made the video of like, you know, and I've heard it like, do you really think you should be eating that? Or do you look at she's put on some weight? It, it's like there's always some it's always like the aunt or the freaking the older, you know, generation. Right. And you know what they don't really realize is they can literally trigger someone for their entire fucking life. Like whatever they say, that person may remember that for years to come. Yeah. I think that's very people true. don't realize like what they say has a profound effect on the people. Yeah, one, absolutely. And so then that goes into, first of all, accepting the fact that that might happen. Right. So we need to accept, right. we need to, we need to accept that we can't control others. We can control our reactions to others, and we can tr- we can try to, like, if if we have a family member that we know is notorious for this, n- notorious for diet talk or or talking about our body, we can start setting those right. expectations up ahead of time. You know, uh, we can gradually in conversations, text message conversation, things like that, let them know you know that y- you're working on your mindset and your mental health and everything, and those type of com- comments do more, more harm than good. Yeah. Or, or, you know, if they insist, like when they bring it up, you know, if grandma gets, a, gets offended because you don't want, like, maybe you've had enough, maybe you, you're, you've eaten enough and you're just physically uncomfortable if you were to eat more. But, right. you know, grandmas, they can be like, oh, you, you, they get offended if you don't eat more. Like, grandma, thank you. Like, I truly appreciate it, you know, but I, I would not feel well physically if I ate more food. So I can't. Yeah. But what I would love to do is can you pack me up some to go in a box, right? Like, I would love right. to take some home. Thanksgiving leftovers are fucking better than the original. Oh my God. They're my favorite. Yeah. I had a cold turkey sandwich yesterday and it was amazing. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to that. (laughs) Absolutely. And then, and then of course we have, you know, diet talk. So people are always going to be talking about our diets, you know, Mm -hmm. keto, especially like, um, will probably be a, a big one or carnivore or something, you know, and aunt Karen might be talking about how great keto is and how it's, it's making her feel good. But you know what, Th- this is the time of the year. We don't talk about, we don't yeah. talk about religion. We don't talk about politics and we right. don't talk about diets. At the, at, at yeah. The table. Jesus so, Christ. So those are the three rules, right? So we can, we can lay that up, up front with our, it's about setting boundaries with, yes, with our family boundaries. members and friends. So I don't think this is the best time to talk about that. Or it could go like just, um, acknowledge what they said. Like, yeah, Aunt Karen, I'm so glad that keto is working for you and you found a, a community that accepts you and that, that you're able to be successful with. But like, let's talk about your job or let's talk about right. cousin Billy or something, you know? So accept, but then change the subject as soon as possible. Yeah, really. exactly. Because if, if you don't accept, I would personally want to fight back against the keto thing right but like that's not the time or the place so understanding that's not the time or the place you're like you know what okay that's great i'm glad to hear you're happy that's amazing so anyway put your ego aside yeah right yeah onward and upward onward you know aunt karen's gonna want to go into a fucking keto portal hole that's just what happens so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) i find that when when people like get obsessed with like a diet they just don't want to stop talking about it that's their personality. Um, so you kind of have point. to hit hit it before it gets to the point of no return. Nip it in the bud. Yeah. Right. Sure, right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So then we deal with things like the, the the body, you know, body comments. So how would you handle um, oh, yeah. family members that insist on talking about our body? Maybe it's that we lost weight or maybe that's we've we've gained weight. You know, not everybody wants those comments. You know, some people some people do like those comments, but most people don't, especially the negative comments. So how, right. how would you re- suggest we handle that? Ah, oh, that's a good question. You know, what would you say? What, what would what I say to someone? I've said, you know, what, you've put on some weight. Yeah. What do you What do you well, say to that? At first, like you know, you kind of go into like a little, little bit of a shock because it's like you, right, like you know, everyone knows if they put on their weight, they know they have. It's they, like why do you yeah, have to exactly. fucking say something about it, right? Um, mm-hmm. I think just you know saying you know I really don't think I really want to talk about that right now. It's something yeah, just, that, where you can say, perfectly... I, I'm, I'm working on myself or, you know, you know, that's a tough one yeah. because coming from me, 
I'd be. Yeah. How, how, how would you handle it? Let's, <laughs> let's start there. I, I would be like, you know what? I would just probably say, just, just stop talking. Mind your fucking business. I already, yeah. I, right. I already fucking know. Like, thank you. Let's just talk about something else. All right. I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Depending on who there's, it was. There's like, lots of ways you can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of ways you can handle yeah. it. You know, some people, now this isn't the, I would not recommend doing this, but some people want to give, you know, like they want to give it back. Right. So also like, right. like I've noticed you gain some weight too. That's not the right way to do it, you know, because that just makes it a toxic environment and, yeah. it, and, it, and it escalates things. But what I would recommend is saying something like, you know, what I do with my body is up to me. Like, this is my body. I don't, I don't judge you for what you do with your body. Um, right. But also, like, how would you feel if I made those comments towards you, right? Like, how would, and yeah. honestly, it's, it's going back to fucking elementary school. Like, if you want to want to hear it yourself, then don't say it. It, it goes back to that. So finding that way of, of putting it that way is key. Yeah. And then almost realizing that there's more something about them that's going on with them than about you. Right. Like, why, it's not you. Why would someone need to body shame someone to that extent? That means they're unhappy with themselves. So they have to make someone else feel worse than they are. Yep. When they're saying these things and putting you down, whether intentionally or not, they're projecting in a way. So they're not happy with where they're at with it. Maybe it's with their body or maybe they're stressed. Maybe they're having a bad day or, or whatever, right. but it's not a reflection of you when they say these things. So, so let's start there. That's a great way. That's a great way of putting it. It's not yeah. that you, you, you haven't done anything wrong. It's not you, it's them. So we, we re reframe that train of thought then right away then too. Exactly. Lovely. What about the, family members that just don't listen to our boundaries that insist on continuing to do these things, even after we've told them and made it perfectly clear to them that your comments and your, your actions are unwanted. That's a good question. I, I think then at that point, it takes some, some serious action. You never know, you might have to leave the party. You yeah. know, if it comes down to that. Boundaries are hard because right. enforcing boundaries is incredibly fucking difficult because that mm -hmm. makes you feel bad. But if somebody pushes back against your boundaries, they do not respect you flat out. Right. I don't care if this is your own mother and father. They do right. not respect you if they are pushing back on your boundaries because they yeah. can no longer take advantage of you when you set boundaries with them. So now they're getting now they're now they're having that clap back. Um, yeah. We see that all a lot in, in narcissists and things like that. It's not a healthy relationship. This time of year it might not be the thing you, you want to hear, but it's the thing you need to hear. If you have set your boundary and you've made it perfectly clear what your boundaries are and people insist on pushing the boundary, they don't care about you. They do not respect yeah. you. I'm sorry, yeah, but it's the truth. Yeah. And that can go a long way then in helping you repair that relationship too, because Mm -hmm. Then it becomes, do they realize they're pushing back on the boundaries or do they right. just not care that they're pushing back on the boundaries? So then that kind of gives you that awareness too. Yeah. In my opinion, in my opinion. Have you yeah. ever dealt with anything like that? No, not to that extent. Mm -mm. No? Would you, no? Do you have clients oh that struggle with setting boundaries? I think it's just they don't know how to start the conversation really. Okay. You know, communication is key. I think people have a hard time communicating. Like, Try not to be silent and let them get away with it because then they'll keep doing it. I think that's another thing. I think people just don't like to have those tough conversations and they just mm -hmm. let people get away with that shit. But for me, like, I think it's important to, A, like you said, set boundaries and stick to them. And that goes like when you're like, let's say in a weight loss journey, right? And you want support at home. You have mm -hmm. to have, without the communication with your spouse or whoever's living in the house, you all have to be on the same page. So I guess that's where I'm going with that. Yeah, you said you said that beautifully. How do you prepare them for that conversation then? I mean, because that's not an easy conversation to have, right? Um, yeah, just like, okay, you know, this is important to me and I really want you to know what I'm going through right now. Like, can you please not bring this home or force me to do that? I'm, I'm asking you to do this for me right now. It, you know, you really just need to yeah. say this is important to me. And that's really, you shouldn't have to explain yourself any more than that. Right. Right there. Yeah. Um, but then, like you said, if, if they continue, if they continue to not listen to you and push you, push that boundary, you are, you're faced with an action or faced, mm -hmm. faced with a decision. Do you sit there and take it or do you stop it from happening? Which then means you could potentially be leaving. Right. I tell you what, everybody will remember the time that you left Thanksgiving because Aunt Karen was being an asshole to you, you know, and wasn't, yeah. you know, so then it becomes, well, does, is Aunt Karen welcome here at Thanksgiving anymore? Or is right. so-and-so the problem? Um, and that's not necessarily the way we want to look at it, but maybe you're saying the things 
that other family members have been wanting to say too. And you just kind of right. started the, the pendulum, you know, swinging, if you will. Yeah. That, that's that's another way of looking at it too. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also think that it's important to talk about like emotional hunger too. There's many types of hunger, right? Uh, remember, uh, remember that emotional hunger, it is a thing. It is, it is perfectly valid. You aren't a bad person for having emotional hunger. Um, it's okay to feel that feeling. So this goes to the way we're eating them because of emotional hunger. So we want to tap into how we're feeling, you know, either emotionally or in our body physically. Yeah. Um, we want to be able to identify what hunger and, and fullness and satisfaction actually feel like. That takes the stress out of eating if you start to trust your body and, and, and acknowledge that. Yeah, the holidays only, can be know, really emotional for a lot of people. Right, exactly. So then, you know, only you... Beth or me gets to decide what satisfaction feels like. So that goes back to like me getting, if I were getting a second plate because I'm still hungry, Mm -hmm. I'm not satisfied yet. So that's not somebody else's, it's not up to them to decide what enough is essentially. Right. Right. So going back to like the, the diet talk too, then I think what the takeaway there should be avoidance is the safest bet, but it's not always possible. So Mm -hmm. if we can't avoid it, we want to acknowledge, we want to change the subject. (laughs) And what if they persist? Slap them. No, we don't need family. (laughs) We don't need need a family bro. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Tell them we love them and we would love to discuss it with them at a better time. Now is not the time or the place essentially, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you yes. don't like, you don't need to go in like super, like a detail. I think people just need short answers and be done with it. You know, the yeah, more you start to like sure. explain your why, the more it starts to get involved. So it's like simple. No, thank you. I'm good. And be done. And you don't need to explain. No is no. Like you do not need to explain your, your, your answers. Yeah. You know, if I ask a girl out and she says, no, it's that like if she gives me no explanation, I don't she doesn't need to tell me why she just right. said no. And I need to respect that. It goes. To, it yeah. goes it's the same thing for every other fucking situation in life. Exactly. No, you don't owe an explanation to anybody. To nobody. To nobody. To nobody. No motherfucking buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but going back to what you said about it's the things that you do from January to November. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what that's what matters. So what can so some things that we can do year round? I was kind of thinking about this. We want to be more mindful of the food messages we are surrounded by every day. So we could take a look at like our social media feed, for instance. If we're following influencers or coaches that give a negative message about food, you know, foods are good or bad or unhealthy or healthy or eat this, not that, that type of thing. Those are food messages, and you might not realize it, but that's where you're developing your relationship with food from. Yeah. So we want to start by doing a social media detox. So unfollowing anybody, any coach, any person that gives off those food messages that we don't agree with or that are counterproductive to what we're trying to accomplish in, in building right. our, our healthy relationship with food. Right. Yeah. Social media is awful for that, as we know. There's a um, lot of red flags but, that you need to look for. <laughs> Well, it would be some other red flags that we should be looking um, out for. People start then. talking about detoxes after the holidays. Anytime you're doing like, oh. detox, you know, you ever seen those? All right, yeah. have your um, holiday detox. It's like, How, okay. Shed yeah. that holiday weight with this detox. Yeah, yeah what a crock of red shit. Red flag, red flag. Red flag, um, red, huge red flag. Oh my God, huge. Guess, guess, guess what? They're going to have a nice little supplement or four week crash diet program to sell you, right? Right, right. Can almost guarantee it. We can almost guarantee yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was thinking about, so I made the comment about the food swap thing really quickly. And I want to say food swaps aren't inherently bad, right? With most things, most things aren't inherently bad. Food swaps, if done, if done for the right reasons can be good, you know? So swap this for that. Are we doing it because we're afraid of these foods or are we doing it because we truly think that that swap makes the most sense for us and our goals? Like um, for me personally, one of my favorite food swaps is I'll swap Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt for um, sour cream, right? For me, that makes sense because I personally don't notice any difference in taste. And then I'm getting, instead of the fats content, I'm getting the protein. So that's going to help me accomplish my protein goals. And it gives me no guilt whatsoever because I'm not even noticing the difference anyway. So if you're doing the food swaps for the right reason, that's what's important. So we're not swapping fucking... Cauliflower, cauliflower rice mashed for, potatoes for, for regular white. mashed potatoes. Exactly, because carbs are bad. That's that's an example of a right, bad right. food swap. Yeah. yeah. I actually so those are things we can focus on your own. Did you? I, I made some uh, banana bread 
right? So what I did was I swapped out the coconut oil for applesauce and made that made it with Kodiak cake pancake mix. So it was like three bananas, nice. Kodiak cake pancake mix, applesauce, vanilla, two eggs, um, and almond milk. And literally like each slice, it tasted exactly just like regular banana bread, but literally like 110 yeah. calories a slice. And for me, it's like, I love the taste of banana bread, but sometimes it's really calorically dense and I want more of it. So it's not like it tasted yeah, that, like- There's nothing wrong with that. That's asshole. a good spot. It was amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes to taste their asshole. I mean, there's, pro there's probably no. some people out there that do. Let's be let's be real here. But that's I mean, that's, I've like made said, some really, banana bread that was the place. I've made some <laughs> fucking paleo banana bread before that was like almond flour and you know. Just, oh yeah. It it was like a box of rocks. So yeah. That's not really substituting for me. That that's more like no. I thought that whatever other ingredient was bad, so I had to make it right. this way. So, so the reason behind the food swap is, is, is what can make the food swap good or bad. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I, uh, the cooking classes that I do, we teach, because um, mm -hmm. it's out of the gym that I used to coach at, um, and we take like home style meals and make them lower in calorie with like food swapping. So you can eat, yeah. you know, this is about including foods you love while you're still losing weight, just a little, little bit lower in calorie, not as mm -hmm. calorically dense. Because those ingredients are bad or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Right. For sure. And speaking of, you know, good, good ingredients, bad ingredients, you know, so that some other things we can do around the year or year round is to focus on that talk that we have with food, right? So good food, bad food, we need to eliminate that, right? Like we need to work on eliminating that terminology. There are no good foods or bad foods. Um, there's more calorically dense foods and, and less calorically dense foods. There's more nutritious foods, less nutritious foods, but they all, all foods have their place, right? It's just it depends on what yeah. your goals are, um, what moderation looks like for you. You know, moderation for me is different than what moderation looks like for you. Yeah. For me, you know, and it also, might be having three slices of pizza, where for you it might be having two. What was that right? about? Um, also calling yourself good or bad. Like I was so good yesterday. Ooh. Oh, I was so bad yesterday. I need to be better or good today. It's like you have to, we have to stop calling ourselves like this. We're either good or bad as well. I, I hear that a lot. I wasn't good. I'll be better tomorrow. It's like, okay, what exactly what does that mean? You weren't good. Like, are you going to get in trouble for something? You know, so like we could re we, we could reframe that too. So instead of saying like, oh my gosh, I was so bad today. Really it, what you could say instead is like, uh, I tried my best today and that's okay. Or I did, or, or I did everything that I could today and that's, that's okay. You know, I wasn't yep. bad because I didn't do the things I needed to do or because I had more food that I anticipated that it's okay. You, you, yeah. what matters is you did your best that you could in, in, with, with the given cir uh, circumstances. Um, yeah. Was it good or bad? You know, exactly. It's just like with food, you know, eating one salad doesn't make you healthy and eating one pizza doesn't make you unhealthy. So the good or bad thing doesn't exist either. That goes back to what you said at the beginning of the podcast with that all or nothing approach then too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then what we can, can't eat, right? When we can, can't eat. Those are things we should be focusing on throughout the year as well. So those are food rules, right? What we can and cannot eat, when we can and cannot eat. If somebody tells you you cannot, you can only eat between 12 and 8, that's a food rule, you know, that's counterproductive. So we need to el eliminate food rules. So for some people, for a lot of people, food rules are carbs make me fat. I can't have carbs or I can't eat after 8 p.m. because that'll make me fat. So when you're eating or what you're eating, that's those are food food rules. Yeah. God, I hear, you know, I used to do that too. I, I don't know about you, like, but mm -hmm. like, like I'm just getting flashbacks of like old, like Thanksgivings and like, oh, I can't have that right now. Or oh, I'm just not eating, you know, just, just that like fear of like, oh my God, what am I going to be able to have at the Thanksgiving dinner? Like if my father-in-law was putting too much butter in the mashed potatoes, I'd be like, oh God, I can't eat those. Uh, you know, oh, it's, yeah. it's crazy. It, it just like all the diet talk around a Thanksgiving dinner table, like it's insane. Actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you think about it, <laughs> it really is. It really is. And I just thought of something that popped up too. There, there may be people that will have the argument that, well, I can't have, I can't eat whatever I want on Thanksgiving Day because that's going to have a spiral trigger effect. To, you know, that's mm -hmm. trigger me to do more. And what I would say to that is, well, let's look at that relationship. Why is that happening, right? So our what's probably happening then is they don't have a good relationship with food. They're doing they're they're stuck in that classic restrict and binge mindset, I right? Re restrict, so, yeah. 
So what they're going to do sure. is they'll binge uh, on that Thanksgiving day and then leading up, you know, the, or the, the week after, and then they'll go on this heavy restriction when then comes Christmas that they're going to go fucking overboard for a week straight because they, yeah. they, they're in that classic binge and restrict mode, which that's proven time and time again, that restriction leads to binging. So to fix that, you know, well, everything we've been talking about, eliminating the food rules and, and just be a more fucking mindful eater, like be in tune with our body, honor our body's hunger cues. When you're hungry, your eat. Mind. when you're and not your hungry, mind. don't eat. And your mind. Yeah, your mind for sure. That's a big part of it. Big part of it. Your What's mind, going on up like here? you're saying, like your emotional hunger cues. Are you emotionally hungry? Or are you physically hungry? Like mm -hmm. how, okay. Mm -hmm. How would you tell the difference, Matt? Like explain to someone, you know, you're, are you emotionally hungry or are you physically hungry right now? Oh, that's a good question. So for physical hunger, that's got that physical, like I feel nauseous or I have a lot of like, for me, if I don't eat and I'm get hungry, I get a lot of fucking anxiety. So that's one thing right away. Like, why am I feeling so much anxiety right now? It almost feels like in a way for me, like this is how the anxiety hits me. It's, I feel like I could throw up essentially um, because there's so much anxiety hitting me in that moment. I'm like, I need to eat. This is my body's way of telling me that I need to eat. Yeah. And I normally feel better after that. But emotional hunger is you're turning to food as a coping mechanism, right? So Aunt Karen just said, made a disparaging comment on me. I really want to eat my feelings with these you know, dozen cookies or, or things like that. So stressors and, and, and comfort foods and things like that, those are all forms of emotional eating. And maybe I haven't done a good job of kind of explaining that, but physical hunger is a feeling. It's in right. it's, it's within your body. It's not up here. It's not like you're obsessed with this food, the idea of eating this food. You need to have it now because of the environment that you're in. So usually what, yeah. what I'll, I'll, I'll have people do is like to help them understand if it's physical hunger or physical or, or emotional hunger is write the feeling down, right? Um, you can just jot it in your phone. So like, what am yeah. I craving? What, what, I, what do I want to eat? How much of it do I want to eat? What are my surroundings? Who am I with? What am I doing? What's my mental state? What's my emotional state? Then that will help you pinpoint it. So then also what I would do is rate your perceived hunger on a scale of one to 10. But then here's the key part. You eat, you, you allow yourself to have that food. And then you do that same check-in after. So then, then you jot yeah. the same feelings down after you eat and that'll help you understand whether it was truly yeah. an emotional event or, or a physical hunger. That's kind of one way that yeah. I look at it. Also, if you just had a full meal, you know, like mm. think to yourself, yeah. okay, do I really need more? Would I eat an apple right now? If you're not going to want an apple, then you're probably not hungry or, you know, whatever. It's just, you, you have to really like think it takes awareness. So you almost have to yeah. be seated really like pause. Okay. Am I really hungry right now? I just had food. Let me sit here and, you know, or what am I, what's going on here? What happened today? What situation, you know, is it from the situation that just happened with Aunt Karen that I just want to pile drive some fucking pumpkin pie, like all of it or. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And really how many hunger types is there? I think there's like eight or nine different hunger types, but there's, there's four main ones, right? So there's, physical hunger. Like you just mentioned, you're satisfied after eating, mm -hmm. but then we have our emotional and mental hunger, eating for emotional reasons and, and using food as that coping mechanism. Yeah. Then we have practical hunger. This is one that we don't, that kind of gets overlooked too. Um, you're eating at a convenient time because you know that you'll be hungry later, but you won't necessarily have access to food later. So what that could look like is um, like, I like hiking. So I'm not hungry in the morning when I go to start my hike but I know I'm going to be hiking for six to eight hours. So I need to have a good sturdy meal in me right. in order to allow me to feel good while I'm hiking or even eat, having snacks while I'm on the trail to keep my energy levels up, things like that. Then we have, this will be very popular right now for the holidays is mouth, the mouth feel, the mouth and taste hunger, you know, craving mm -hmm. that specific food and flavor, which will then be satisfied hopefully by, by, by giving into that craving. Um, so that's four main types of hunger. Then there's also smell, I believe is one, you know, like you just mm. walk by, walk by, like you smell pumpkin pie and now you want pumpkin pie. That is a scent. Right. That is a type of hunger as well. Learning more about the types of hunger than I would recommend is, is key then for year round practices. Do you have anything to add to that? I think ultimately, like we, we just need to understand that right now isn't the time for us to be worried about. <laughs> our our waistline, you know, right? Um, 
there's so many other things going on and so many other things for us to, to, to truly appreciate spending time with our family. We've been talking about the negatives, you know, but our families are amazing. Hopefully you feel the way, same way about your families and everything like that. We're there to spend time with them and to cherish those memories, build memories, relive old memories. We're not there to beat ourselves up. We're not there to feel yeah. guilty. I think that's the key is that we, we just want you guys to realize that it's okay to enjoy yourself on Thanksgiving. Like you're, you're not going to ruin all your progress. No need to be sitting at the table fearing eating anything and no feeling guilty. Like what does that do? That does nothing. Yeah. Move on. So the, those feelings of guilt then too, that come, that stems from everything we've pretty much talked about, right? That goes, you get those feelings of guilt because you have those food rules, because you, right. you're you practicing those restrictions, because you're saying good foods, bad foods. When you when you label food as bad and then you eat that, that food, you're a bad person and now you're guilty. So it's all about having that healthy relationship with food. It, it truly it, it is. Really and it is. all starts it really up there. Is. Once you have that, it's it's truly life-changing. It is. Then you have that freedom. You got that food freedom and that that, that permission, yeah. giving yourself that, that fucking permission, like very convincing permission. Like nothing else is going to stop you. Nobody else can take that that right away from you and to be happy right. and to, to enjoy the foods that you love, essentially. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I don't know about you, but I don't have any other Thanksgivings planned, but, but maybe I'll I, I already lived it. So I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience right now this year. It's very fresh in my memory, but um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when, when, what are you yeah, doing for I'll Thanksgiving? Be having, I'll be having things. I'm going to my father-in-law's, my husband's dad's, and then going mm-hmm. to my mother, his mom's, which is a separate house after that um, for okay. pie. So I'll, I'll Ooh, have, I'm having nice. two Thanksgivings in one day. I used to do that growing up. I loved it growing up as a kid because I got to eat all the food and, and I would always play video games and Nerf guns and stuff with my cousins. Um, <laughs> as, as an adult, having two Thanksgivings in one day is kind of kind of a pain in the ass, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Especially is, after you actually. eat all that food at the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, yeah. I don't. I don't really want pie after that. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'll have. I'll, I might take it to go. Who knows? I'll eat it. But I'm, yeah. I just. I don't eat when I'm stuffed anymore. It's like one of those things I used to do that I don't. I don't like the feeling of being overly stuffed. Um, yeah, for fact sure. That I used to feel like that all the time. It's like interesting. Yeah. Eating yourself to discomfort and gorging yourself just because you could or because it's there. Um, right. And you weren't what you were doing is you weren't honoring your your, your own body. You weren't honoring your eating. body's hunger cues. Yeah. 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 Using it as a crutch. Yeah. Did you suffer from that after you had quit drinking? Like around the holidays or no, mm-hmm. or did those go hand in hand? Like you were, I think doing, it went like hand in those... hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. Amazing. I don't know. Uh, I think, amazing. I think this is a good one. Um, I hope that it finds people in time for the holidays. This isn't just eating right. around Thanksgiving. It's around, eating around the holidays, whatever your holiday might be. Yeah. Um, an old tagline of mine that I used to use um, we can close with is just, and you you can use your own for eat the fucking fruit. But like for me, it's eat the damn Twinkie. Like honestly, just fucking eat it. It's not gonna kill you. It's not the end of the world. Let's start there. Eat it. Did you die? No. Okay. Cool. We're good. Eat the fucking mashed potatoes. Don't eat the fucking cauliflower <laughs> mash. Okay. Yes. Only if, if you really, co- really, really, really love it, which I yes. doubt. Yeah. But maybe you yeah. do. I like that. <laughs> Stay away from it unless you actually enjoy it. Yes, I like that. You know, yeah. if you really fucking love it, go for it. I don't know. Boom. Have fun. Boom. 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 Yes. Boom. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, Beth and everybody. Have an amazing Cheers. holiday, Thanksgiving. Be safe. Yes. Hope you enjoyed this episode. So why not share it with a friend who needs to hear it? Send us a DM on Instagram or email us at cutthecrappod at gmail.com and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash cutthecrappodcast. As always, we appreciate you and thanks for being here.